Do they all need to be this big? Um, well, I don't think we've even got many this size. Blimey. Well, I hope you're feeling strong because this is going to be a two-person job. All right, if I take the chunky end. And I'll take the thin end. Let's do it. Spud, bomb. I'm a bit scared. <laughs> Ready? Two, three. Are you okay? Oh, I need to get a better grip. Can you get your hands a bit closer to the middle? Ready? One, two, two three. Oh. Oh. oh, that was a good save. Are you okay? Ooh. Oh, it's a chunky monkey. I don't even know how big it looks on camera, but that is a massive stone. Oh. <laughs> so out of breath. Do we think that this wheel is actually going to be able to manage this weight? Well, we're soon going to find out. I mean, this wheelbarrow is about 50 years old. <laughs> oh, God. Use your core. <laughs> that looks the smooth motion. You're a bit warm, kid. I'm roasting. I've only gone about four meters. <laughs> so we're on to something new this week, and the plan is to start tackling these monstrosities under the windows. So we're not really sure what this is made of. I mean, we can see on both the outside and the inside that it's concrete on the faces. However, there's tiny areas where you see stones poking through. Yeah, this is gonna need a bit of investigating before we start knocking it through. But before we do that, we are gonna try and get prepared and get all of our stones ready for when the time comes to rebuild. Need. How long's a piece of string? Just any with nice faces. Take them. And yeah, we'll worry about that later on. Got this one here. What's that? Your face. <laughs> <laughs> been having a bit of a tentative explore shall we say yes yeah, we're still really unsure as to like the actual makeup of this thing because we don't know the reason they've done it for starters so that kind of doesn't give us any indication as to what might be here so other bizarre things have been done on this building so it's a bit of a lottery so yeah just been trying to go as gently as possible with hand tools and I think but I'll be right in saying we've come to the conclusion that I think they've basically just boarded up and poured concrete in there, but then they've chucked a load of stones in there as well, because if you come here, so yeah, you can see here there's stonework inside of there. We wanted to check because the face of this pr concrete protrudes, so we thought maybe they, for some reason they have just covered it, but there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason as to why this would be that way. So I think that's just been filled in. So yeah, a bit of a bizarre one. We still can't figure out why they've done it. These stone walls are normally kind of a double skin most of the time. This one here doesn't have the back part of the wall. On the interior of the building, it cuts in almost like a bay window. And then we just have this single skin here on the front. We wondered if at one point in time it could have been a door, but here underneath these kind of pillars that support the lintel, 
that would have ended up going all the way down to the ground. And if that would have come down, would have cut into where this cornerstone is. So that's kind of a door ruled out. We wonder if maybe for some reason they've taken kind of a stone like the lintel out from underneath, because you can see here, it's a bit dodgy around the edges, but they've not done that on the other window, that's for sure. So yeah, still none the wiser as to why it's been done, but at least we can see now, I think, what we're dealing with here. to say we're both a little bit nervous about doing this but the way that we're kind of trying to chip it out from the middle is in our minds at least the least risky way of doing it because on the sides that's the bit where we want it to be supporting those vertical columns of stone so Ricky's just going to keep chipping away from the middle working his way out slowly and hopefully all being well we can make some nice lovely big holes in our building in the safest way possible. <laughs> that the potatoes are doing really well in the new veg garden but they might be a bit lonely because at the minute they are the only thing that's actually planted in there so I want to get some seeds started off today and I actually took some advice perhaps a little bit belatedly to get some special germination compost rather than just using a multi-purpose because I really and truly want to give this veg garden every possible chance to succeed so I'm accepting and trying to action any bit of advice I'm given. <laughs> So I'm going to do some sweet pepper, I've got a few different types of tomato seed, cabbage and then also courgette and that will be the first time of trying to grow these. So I did read the bag of compost just to make sure I was doing it as correctly as possible and it says you need to rehydrate the uh, material before you start actually putting any seeds in so that is what I'm going to do because I'm following the rules. It does feel a bit different to normal compost actually, much finer I'd say, far fewer clumps, oh apart from that stick. <laughs> Next up are the courgettes. They're big. I don't know what I was expecting from the courgette seeds, but they're way bigger than I thought they were going to be. Large. Now for the peppers. Watermelons are definitely one of the things I'm most excited about growing. I think possibly it's because I'm British and there wouldn't be a, a hope in hell's chance of actually being able to grow watermelons in the UK. But here, there's every chance. Our neighbour often grows watermelon and he would share them with us, but to be able to actually share them back might be a nice thing this year. So I've got three types of tomato I'm going to plant now. I am actually going to try and order some slightly jazzy varieties off of the internet because at the local place uh, I got these from, they didn't actually have anything what I would class as a jazzy variety. So if you have any suggestions of tomatoes that you really enjoy growing that are a little bit different, please let me know what you suggest because as I say, I am hungry for ideas right now. I've just put the seeds outside because they're drying out way too quickly in there. I'm going to get some polythene to cover it over just to stop the evaporation so much. But first I'm actually going to go see how Ricky's getting on. The SDS drill has not stopped so I don't know what size hole he's made. I don't know if it's just the angle but I actually can't see any hole. That is not what I expected at all. 
Take your headphones off. <laughs> Where's my hole? <laughs> oh, my ears are killing me. Have they been a bit squashed? This and this. Oh, blimey. No, sorry, what did you say? Where's my hole? All I can see is what a wall. Well, there's quite a lot of stone in there. I, I still can't work out whether this was the original wall that's then for some reason had a load of concrete put over or whether it's just some of the stones are original and the rest of it was just boarded up and they just kind of placed it in with the board but I sort of tried to chase it all out just so we could see what we're dealing with because in an ideal world I'd much rather leave original stonework there. Absolutely. But have a look, it's not the best looking. What are you thinking? I'm not sure if I'm being completely honest. Same. I'm pleased that there's stone there. Um, it's still obviously pretty caked in concrete, but I don't know. I mean, some of the stones aren't dreadful. What I can't work out is whether I'm trying to convince myself that the stonework is good enough purely because when I think of putting a hole in the building, I get a bit of a quiver in the back of my shorts. <laughs> my only thought is that these stones are a lot bigger than I expected them to be if they were just sort of rubble that was poured in as aggregate. I wonder whether we can leave key ones and just replace the poor ones. Maybe. On these ones, did the concrete just bust off quite nicely? Because obviously... The concrete hasn't busted off nicely off of anything. Okay. Yeah. Not an easy task, but neither is bashing it through. Nor is building the stone wall. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think the jury's still out for now on this one. I think before we can make a proper decision, need to get the rest of this concrete off because a few of the stones that we've revealed are actually set back a bit from the face of the other stonework around the window but where there's areas of concrete around it it makes it kind of look like it's recessed further in than potentially it is so yeah I'm gonna grab some lunch and then I'll come back out and I'll get the rest of this done So we've made a decision and we're demolishing, which I can't, <laughs> I'm not too happy about because A, I would love not to do the work and B, I would love to keep as much of the original stonework there as possible, but <sighs> they're just not good enough. Some of the stuff that we thought had faces doesn't really have faces. Now it's fully dried out. We can see it's just the concrete. Other ones just don't really have a face. It's kind of curved out where it's just a poor stone. Yeah, when I was trying to break it yesterday, it was just really difficult to gauge what was concrete and what was stone because over the years, the two have become one. So when you're breaking it down, it's just really hard to tell. Yeah, it's pretty tempting to just find any way possible to keep the, the stone in place because it is gonna be pretty nerve wracking to say the least to remove it and make a big old hole in the wall, but yeah, needs must. <laughs> So time for me to get the SDS back out again and just carefully, as careful as possible, start taking out some of the stones.
this isn't how I thought it was going to go. Oh dear. So that didn't go quite as I expected, but it does actually exemplify what I'm going to do and why I need to do it because this temporary ramp is quite soft ground and anytime I'm using it for anything heavier than I don't know a few branches the wheelbarrow is just wanting to sink into it so I've gathered up some really really rough stones stones that don't have faces stones that might have quite a bit of concrete on ie stones that we're not going to build with because I'm going to graduate this down starting with stones and then I'm going to top it off with some soil might try a slightly different technique though to get the stones out of the wheelbarrow okay back you go Maybe not. <laughs> This is taking so much more rock than I anticipated. I think I'm probably going to need at least another two, perhaps three wheelbarrows and it is getting absolutely blooming boiling right now. I'm not complaining, I'm just commenting. <laughs> It never ceases to amaze me here how quickly the seasons seem to change. Literally within a matter of days, we've gone from all of the trees being completely bare to basically they're all really coming into bloom. We've got blossom everywhere. We've got leaves coming through. Yeah, spring has properly sprung. Me. That's a hole. Don't you think it looks like a surprised little face? <laughs> a bit. So yeah, I've just been kind of trying to figure out which line to take because I don't want to take all of them out. I don't just want to cut it down straight. We want to be able to integrate the new stones in. You know, you can see here, like some of these are okay to leave and I'm trying to leave as much intact as possible around here because this is obviously the pillar that's taken the load from the lintel. Although I don't think it would go anywhere even if we did take this out because this stone and the one on the opposite side run all the way through to the inside wall. They are big, deep stones. Yeah, a few more to take out and then we'll be ready to rebuild. Are you tempted to leave it as a potential doggy porthole situation? The uh, poppy porthole. <laughs> There we go, that's done. Just in the nick of time as well, to be honest. I don't think I could have done much more because not only is the wall in pieces, but my back is too. I actually had to do the last bit sitting down in a chair because being a tall person, working that low down is not enjoyable, especially when you're holding a heavy vibrating thing. But yeah, anyway, that's all done. And now after doing all that back breaking work, I've got the fun job of clearing everything up. Just finished mixing up some lime mortar ready to start rebuilding underneath this window with all the irregular shapes and like jagged edges that I need to fill in. You can definitely foresee this is going to be 
a little bit awkward. Well, maybe I can just leave it like this. There you go, job done. End of video, see you next week. Do you feel at one with the stone today? No. Me and the stone are worlds apart. <laughs> do you need to do a little stone dance? <laughs> Staring at it helps. <laughs> like that. That looks good. Or it will do once it's pointed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> Needs so much fiddling. <laughs> Stay. Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst Ricky's getting on with that, I'm going to go and finish off the ramp that goes down into the veg garden. I'd actually intended to use the soil from right here, but there's been a slight change of plan because I don't know if you can hear it in my uh, voice, but I've woken up with an absolute stinker of a cold today. So Ricky's basically banned me from too much strenuous or heavy lifting. So I'm going to take a slightly easier approach and take some of the earth from where we originally had the raised garden bed. I'm going to blame the cold and flu medicine that I'm taking because I'm not thinking clearly. Ricky is currently using the wheelbarrow that I need to use because yes, on this farm, we do only have one communal wheelbarrow. <laughs> so I need you to turf your mortar out into a big bucket, please. Actually, got a bit of a surprise for you. I bought another one and I was in the city the other day. I just forgot to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> How exciting. Yeah, problem solved. Okay, try to contain your excitement. <laughs> Ooh! Ah! <laughs> Looks a bit of a squeeze in there. Yeah, I was actually worried when I bought it to the car park, I wasn't going to be able to get it in. Ooh. That's nice and light. Good, isn't it? Yeah, no squeak. No rust. No rust. I think that's all that's holding the other one together. It's a big time improvement. I think I've disturbed a massive ant's nest. have been joking when he told me to contain my excitement and I know that a wheelbarrow is a little bit of a mundane thing but it really is a superb wheelbarrow. The trajectory of my day has changed a little bit because my plan today was really only to rebuild the outside skin, the outside portion of the wall. I was trying to leave the concrete inside untouched for now just to add a bit more stability with a view to doing it at a later date and just to try and get this hole blocked up to the outside as quick as possible. However, getting a few stones in, I've just realized it's, it's not feasible to do that. The way that the two walls inside and out kind of interact and join with each other. You know, there's points where stone from one side is gonna go into the other and it's just making it really difficult to build it without that. So I've just had the SDS out and I've just basically broken off a load on the kind of those straight concrete edges on the inside with a view to trying to put the stones in there and have some that integrate with the rest of the wall. Some of the concrete is going to be left inside still and that way I can just build the front and back simultaneously, kind of level them off at the same point, join them together for extra strength. I oh, also had to get the angle grinder and just create a, uh, what's the word? Hmm. 
channel, maybe channel is the right word, between the concrete that's currently in that gap in the bay of the window and the rest of the room because that concrete floor is going to be coming out at some point because we need to replace it because it has rising damp come through it so i've put a channel in there so when that point comes i can break away the concrete floor inside the main building without affecting the bit that's going to be underneath the stone What do you reckon? Looking good. Well, I want you to have room for improvement, so 8.5. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> it looks like it's taken a lot of rock. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a bigger job than I anticipated. So because I'm now doing the inside of the stonework as well, I'm actually plowing my way through mortar. So I've used up everything I've got. I need to go and make some more before I can carry on. But even just with the little bit that I've done so far, you can really see this starting to take shape and the transformation that it's gonna be. It's just been hollow on the inside underneath the window and the whole time we've owned it. So now seeing this starting to build up, it's gonna be a lovely deep windowsill. So yeah, I can't wait till we get to pouring those. looking for some good recommendations for some audiobooks to listen to because in the coming months we're going to have lots of pointing and things like that where it's going to be lots of peace and quiet to yourself just working on a job for hours on end so I'm looking for some good ones I'm just finishing up the Kurt Cobain biography what's it called heavier than heaven interesting but I'm sure you can imagine pretty heavy so yeah anything music related not the biggest fan of fiction let me know such a beautiful pink sunset this evening. We've been having so many stunning sunsets lately. But as beautiful as it may be, I'm rapidly running out of light. I'm gonna carry on for as long as I can because I've got a lot more mortar left to try and use up and the hole is still not finished, but I'll see how much I can get done. So I'm definitely not gonna get this finished today, which is hardly surprising seeing as halfway through the day kind of doubled my expected workload, but it's really good to have got this started and it's starting to take shape. It's one of those jobs that just for a long time we've been pushing to the back of our mind because we've been a bit afraid that we're just going to open up a can of worms when we take that off because we didn't know what was behind it. But at least now the plaster has been ripped off. We know what we're dealing with and the cat's out of the bag. So hopefully next time it's going to be a bit quicker, a bit easier and a bit less nerve wracking.